It's never been a body of water Vancouverites turn to for a swim, but with a thick algal bloom covering large sections of Lost Lagoon, the water looks downright swampy. My first impression is I don't like it. Well, it's not as, as beautiful, obviously, as seeing the swans and the ducks and no algae. <laughs> it doesn't look too healthy, to be honest. It has become a seasonal cycle. Each summer, the algae blooms. But for regular visitors and neighbours like Stephanie Ryan, it's never been this bad. It does seem like one of the worst. It seems really big and like the algae is really thriving. Ryan's apartment overlooks the lagoon. She remembers previous years, like in 2022, when a bunch of carp showed up dead. But this year, she says it's different, with orange growth on the surface. When the wind blows the right way, you can even get a waft of the decomposing slurry. It is disgusting, and frankly, it's sort of a shame that the bloom's happening now in peak tourism season. There's like a million people biking around the lagoon every day, and this is what they get to see. The bloom is now a seasonal fixture, but it wasn't always like this. There was a bridge uh, into Stanley Park, but there was still full tidal flows. Lost Lagoon used to actually be an ocean lagoon, connected to Coal Harbour. Local First Nations had settlements here, and shellfish was harvested. It would flush out to the sea daily. A little more than 100 years ago, a dam was built. The causeway went in, connecting downtown to Stanley Park and eventually the Lionsgate Bridge. Now the brackish lake is stagnant, about a metre deep all the way across. Now, in the condition that it's in and due to decisions made in the past, we have a lake that's in a very unhealthy condition. Townsend says the shallow depth means it's particularly vulnerable to warm spells and nutrient imbalances. He says it's hard to assess how this year's bloom compares to previous years, but he says the park board has received more complaints about it than ever before. The fix? Well, it could be expensive. The projects that we're talking about are significant infrastructure projects. They are not easy fixes of putting in a fountain or, uh, or harvesting the algae. Townsend says one of the options, at one point estimated to cost $20 million, is to reconnect the lagoon with the ocean. He says the park board will discuss that with local First Nations and other levels of government. It does take time to turn back the clock on some of these ecosystem changes, but I believe it's possible. Until a drastic intervention at Lost Lagoon, we can expect the algae to keep coming back each summer. Rafferty Baker, CBC News, Vancouver.